to go to DSW. I have a ten dollar rewards. I have a five dollar birthday coupon, and then I have a coupon for free. Right into this world, all alone. God takes your soul. You're on your own. The crow flies straight, a perfect line. On the devil's bed until you die. This life is short. This is Fast Daddy for Rise Above Talk Show, and today's guest is Scott Riom. Now, before we get on to our show, I have to uh, obviously mention our sponsors of the show. So, here we go. Mattress by appointment in Plattsburgh. Jam and Express in Peru, New York. North Country Auto Glass. In Plattsburgh, New York. Powerhouse Gym, Plattsburgh, New York. Osable Chasm in Keysville, New York. Signs Incorporated in Malone, New York. VFW Post 1505 in Keysville, New York. And obviously we have a group that we'd like you to join, Bridge the Gap. Uh, you can go onto their Facebook page, join, and there's a petition you can sign uh, to help try to build a gr uh, bridge from Plattsburgh to Vermont. If you're looking for somebody in Clinton County and needs a pistol permit, you can get a hold of Chris Milady or myself. I will uh, help you out there. Chris Milady does classes every second and fourth Saturday of the month. So again, if you need uh, know anybody who needs a pistol permit, you can contact me or Chris Milady. There is also a golf tournament, Keysville Vol Volunteer Fire Department, Mark Dragoon Water Rescue Fundraiser, 5th Annual Golf Tournament, Saturday, August 4th, 2018, at the Otter on Deck Golf Course. Four-person scramble, skins game available with 100% payout, Entry fee is $270 per team. They do have a golf, a golf ball drop, $5 per ticket. Again, Saturday, August 4th, 2018. Three chances to win. First closest to the hole or in the hole. Second closest to the hole. Or third farthest from the hole. The prize money will be determined on how many tickets are sold, up to 800 Proceeds will help pay for the equipment and training. You can contact Grant Brassard at 593-0183 or call in Morrow, 518-593-11, I'm sorry, 1998. So again, now we are here uh, with Scott Riom. How are we doing, Scott? Not bad. How are you, Ed? I am doing okay. Thank you for asking. Um... Again, we're going to be talking about uh, you and your fishing, and it's amateur fishing, am I correct? Eh, I guess you could call it that. Eh, you know, hey, you got to start somewhere. I mean, we can just go pro <laughs> if you want to see me say pro. But, uh, I'm going to start off with just some uh, icebreaker questions for you, okay? Uh, fire away. All right, here we go. So, how old and where were you when you had your first alcoholic drink uh, well tough one I don't drink Ed <laughs> huh <laughs> no okay. really, really I, I think it was probably in your parents basement we were probably around 16 if I remember correctly 
That sounds about right. <laughs> okay, uh, do you have a uh, a bucket list at all? You know, things you want to do. Um, as far as fishing or in general? Ah, oh, just in general. We are, we're not getting to the fishing part yet. Well, um, I'd love to jump out of an airplane. Oh, well, there we go. Preferably with a parachute. Oh well, that probably would be helpful. Just maybe for a softer maybe. landing. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what are your, some of your goals and achievements that you like to accomplish? Again, that could be anything. So, um, well, I really like to probably do a little better at the whole fishing thing. You know, I mean, I do okay, but uh, I always like to be a, a little bit better. Very true. Right. Practice Very true. makes perfect, right? Um, let's see. Okay, here's one for you. Now, if you're going to be a character in a movie, what would it be? Huh. Uh, probably Jason Bourne. Jason Bourne? Is that because he gets his memory wiped out? I, mean, I don't know. Or he's just, uh, he does kung fu stuff. Yeah, he's kind of a badass. He is. He is. I, I give him that. Okay, so, so that's, I, that's, I'm going to stop the those questions from there. We're going to get into the actual fishing aspect of all this. I mean, you guys are pretty big in all this fishing stuff, so we're going to ask some questions about that. But first off, obviously, uh, who is he actually your fishing partner? Uh, it'd be uh, Cliff Chilson. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, he's uh, one of real-life baits. Makes uh, jigs, uh, soft plastics for fishing. Uh, huh. we've, been, we've been fishing partners for like three years, I think. Three years? Okay. So long enough. It's probably know each other's cycles, ping times, and all that. <laughs> um, I, I was just going to ask you how long you guys been fishing together, but I guess that's it. So, uh, actually, how many uh, tournaments um, do you do roughly a year, and exactly what kind of locations do you go to? <clears throat> well, we, uh, we do. The, uh, this year we're doing the Cash and Rods Tour, which is a Northeast tour. Uh, they go to uh, Oneida Lake. Um, they're going there twice. Uh, uh, Cayuga Lake in August. Uh, we're going to be on Lake Champlain in August out of Ticonderoga. And also the St. Lawrence River out of Messina this year. Oh. Well, that's good. That's nice. Uh, uh, we also do a, a national tour of the FLW, Fishing League Worldwide, uh, really? Northeast Division BFLs. Uh, we just came back, Cliff and I just came back from the Potomac River down in Maryland. Um, they also go to Champlain this year, Oneida, and the St. Lawrence. Huh. And we also do right here locally in, uh, down here in central New York, we do a, uh, just a little, like a Tuesday night a buddy tournament kind of a deal, 10 weeks of that on the Erie, Erie Canal here. So it's a total of 19 tournaments this year that we're actually going to be doing. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, any one Pacific tournament that you're actually looking forward to more than the other? Uh, I look forward to them all, but um, I, I, we, we, left, we left a lot on the table last year when we uh, went to Champlain. And so we got something to prove going back to Champlain this year. So we're looking forward to, definitely looking forward to that. Huh. Yes. Well, uh, talking about uh, your tournaments and stuff like that, we actually have a video uh, of you guys fishing, obviously different clips of throughout uh, last year. Uh, so I want to play that now. So everybody pay, uh, pay attention to this and watch this video. And we'll be back in a minute. Here you go.
nice. That was a good video. So, um, yeah, describe that, that one. <laughs> Where's most of the actual uh, lakes you were at there? Uh, that was uh, taken last year. Uh, videos of us on uh, Potomac River down in Maryland for the FLWBFL we did last year down there. There was clips on there from uh, Washington, D.C., where you saw the planes flying over. That was in Washington, D.C. Oh, wow. yeah. well, that's interesting. All right. Now, actually, do you guys have a name for your team? Um, just not really. I mean, the tournaments that we do, the ma the bigger tournaments are, uh, you know, just our names. But uh, we the ten week ones that we do down here, we, it's more of a kind of a relaxing uh, tournaments. There, we I think. I don't even know what we call it. It's rock bottom or something like that. <laughs> uh, and you guys actually uh, make your own jigs and lures. Is that correct? Uh, Cliff does. Uh, real life jigs. He he makes phenomenal stuff if uh, anyone's interested in that. Uh, real life jigs dot, or real life baits dot com. He uh, makes jigs, hand tied jigs. Um, he also this year started making soft plastics that all uh, him and I both used on the Potomac River this year, and we caught fish. Every fish that I caught down there this year, even though I didn't catch very many, but <laughs> everything we caught down there this year were uh, caught off from real-life jigs and uh, his soft plastics. Oh, really? Phenomenal quality work. Oh, very nice. Um, actually, I have a few pictures here as well here. Um, I'll put these up, just sort of some fish that you guys caught. Yeah, not, not a very impressive one there. <laughs> well, you know. Hey. Oops, let me go do this here. Actually, that's one of his jigs there, right? Yeah, that's one of his jigs right there, as a matter of fact. That's a few pictures right there. Um, so during tournaments, obviously, it's kind of, you know, everyone thinks of fishing being kind of relaxed, laid back, and this and that. But obviously tournaments are a little different because you're actually in a, a time frame, which I'm going to ask you the time frame from when you start and when you finish to the um, the weigh-in, I guess you I guess would call it, right? Weigh-in. Um, yeah, weigh-in, yep. How much is there? A, a, is there any type of stress level? And if, you know, if, if so, I mean, how do you guys actually keep it for you know being an enjoyable and fun? Uh, stress level is uh, really it depends on what kind of stress you put on yourself. Uh, I have been known to stress out way more than I should, <laughs> but uh, time frames run from like usually safe light in the first thing in the morning to like six o'clock in the morning until. Uh, like 2, 2 p.m. For, for most tournaments. Uh, the bigger tournaments, like the Cash and Rod series, they stagger it so, so that they don't have 200 bolts taking off all at once. They stagger uh, in what they call flights. So like 20 bolts at a time will take off at 6 o'clock, and then they'll 6.15, another 20 bolts take off, something like that. Oh, that's cool. It's a lot safer, yeah. but... Uh, Actually, I didn't even know that. I was actually going to ask you. I was like, how in the heck do they keep track of everybody at once if they're all in the water at once? But... <laughs> uh, now, what's your actually favorite part of about fishing? Uh, the competitiveness. Uh, you touched on the, the stress, stress part. Um, there's a professional angler named Gerald Swindle, and he puts out a, put out a uh, video called Positive Mental Attitude. I, it can doesn't have to, have to necessarily reflect just for fishing. Uh, anybody can watch that video, and you can relate it to anything in life, and it's all about trying to stay positive in everything you do. It eliminates negativity, and that's really helped me out a lot, trying to stay positive on the water and uh, not let the little things just completely derail your whole entire day. Right. Huh? Right. Huh? Uh, do you guys have any uh, sponsors? Uh, we got a couple of sponsors. This year we picked up a major sponsor who helped us out tremendously, uh, the Lions Rod and Gun Club down here in Lions, New York. 
Uh, they came on board. That's a huge help for Cliff and I. Uh, we got Cliff's uh, business, Real Life Baits. Again, at reallifebaits.com. You can look them up on Facebook as well. And uh, Signs Inc., our, our good buddy, Bill North. He, uh, he's been with me since day one for, for doing this. So he always gets the uh, the mention on uh, he's also got the sticker on the boat. So. <laughs> Actually, there's one of the pictures. Actually, yeah, the last picture, he actually had it on there. Uh, what are you looking forward to the most this this fish is in? Uh, like I said, just getting out onto uh, Champlain again. We, we're, we're dying to get back there and prove that we can actually do well there. We did really great uh, all week before the tournament, and on tournament day, things just fell apart for us. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, you were out there with us a couple of these practicing, <laughs> and uh, we uh, we put the herd on some pretty decent sized fish, and then uh, things just unraveled for us on Saturday. Now, when when you're like in the in the tournaments and stuff like that, and you're catching fish, obviously bass more likely, but uh, obviously there's a different weight. Um, first off, uh, uh, how many fish? can you have to the weigh-in, and what's the average uh, weight of a fish that you would need? Uh, most tournaments, bigger tournaments, they're all uh, five fish limits. So you, what you want to do is you want to take your the five biggest fish throughout the day, and that's what you're going to weigh, weigh in. Um, average, depending on the lake, uh, if you, we always aim for, if you can get 17 to 18 pounds or, or better, you know you're in really good shape. Um, so if you can show up with 20, 21 pounds out of weigh-in, you're walking up there with your chest pumped out because you know you did really well. Oh. That's good stuff right there. Uh, obviously, there's uh, different techniques of uh, fishing. Obviously, because when I went out with you guys, when you guys even came out here, uh, you guys showed me a few different things, and which obviously worked, and I actually use them now when I'm out on the lake myself. And <laughs> quite a bit. Uh, so can you just uh, discuss a little bit about what the different techniques are in fishing? Um, well, uh, there's a lot of different techniques. There's, I think we mostly showed you of like finesse tactics, like drop shotting. Um, that's, that's more Cliff's forte. I am more of a power fisherman, flipping jigs, uh, crankbaits. Um, there's and that all depends on the, where you're fishing. Like Lake Champlain is a deeper, clear water, small mouth type lake where drop shotting works really well. Um, around here, where we get a lot more grass and, and shallower water, the flipping jigs at structure, that that is more what well, I'm more comfortable with doing. So um, there's, there's a lot of different techniques. Uh, there's a YouTube video on just about everything you can possibly imagine. Which is where I've learned most of my stuff. <laughs> I've only I haven't been doing this for very long, so. <laughs> so if you're gonna say, uh, what was your favorite technique? Which one? Uh, flipping a one ounce jig into heavy vegetation and just waiting for that little distinctive uh, tap on the lure. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so what technique would you actually want to improve on then? Um, I had a. Yes, I would probably say drop shotting because uh, I just, I'm not very good with the spinning right hand with light line and uh, I, my, my philosophy is pick one thing every year and try to get better at it. Now obviously you, gotta, you have a, actually have to have a boat obviously, so what type of boat uh, do you have? I have a Skeeter ZX200 with a 200 horse Yamaha motor. Uh, I have Hummingbird Helix 9 graphs, the Helix 9 down imaging on the bow, and a side imaging on the console. One single power pole and a Minn Kota 101 Fortrex trolling motor. That'll do it. Uh, is there any type of upgrades uh, to your boat you want? Yeah. Or? move up or uh the the dream of owning an uh old trex trolling motor would be amazing that that's revolutionized the uh 
the whole fishing industry and someday I would hope to put one of them on. <laughs> well, there's always hope, Scott. There's always hope. Uh, we need some more sponsors to jump on board and help me go. out with that. Let's get some more sponsors on here, people. Um, we can help you out with that. We'll, 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 we'll get you some. Um, and obviously there's a lot of different type of uh, fishing rods and stuff like that. <laughs> what type of fishing rods do you guys use? Uh, well, obviously uh, doing the cash and rods tour, I, cash and rods are probably the best rod I've ever used. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive. Um, they're the feel, the, the just the way they they're so they're extremely light. They're very technique oriented, um, but they are by far the best fishing rod that I've ever owned. And I also have a couple of Abu Garcia Veritas rods that I like to use as well. Now, uh, here's something. Uh, obviously, when you're going into tournaments, um, can you uh, kind of tell us, like, what goes on, um, even starting, like, the night before? Obviously, because you have to probably travel some places. So, is it, like, you stay a certain amount of time at, when you travel to a certain lake? Um, and, you know, what do you do to get ready for a tournament? Um, well, preparation begins usually like for a lake that we've never been to like last year cliff and i had never been to champlain and uh so i mean preparation started months ahead of time with as far as re researching online but uh we were we on a lake we've never been to we try to get we try to spend a week um uh, just a lot of a lot of it's just riding around looking around um trying to find different different areas if we find something that looks real good we'll uh, stop and fish it just to see what kind of uh, quality fish a spot will hold. And then uh, we'll, you know, keep moving throughout the day, try to get a game plan down for uh, the actual tournament day. Uh, the night before a tournament, it's all uh, putting new line on each reel that you have. Um, I te tend to not really like to tie anything on until the, that morning because uh, things can change overnight, like last year on Champlain. Uh, all week long, the wind was out of one direction, and it wasn't for too strong. Uh, tournament day, the wind completely shifted and blew straight out of the south at 10 to 15 miles an hour, okay. and it completely changed everything for us. So we uh, really scrambled that day, and uh, we tried to uh, adjust to changing conditions as much as possible. But uh, it, it takes a lot of... Uh, Men, uh, it's not so much physical demand, physically demanding as it is mentally demanding. So is that it for the whole getting ready for a tournament and then? Um, you try to get a good it, night's actually, sleep. <laughs> how is it like when you're actually out there and you're, and you're, you know, you're at like maybe I don't know, say, ten minutes before you had to end the tournament, and obviously each situation is different, obviously, but I mean. Do you say if you're like missing that one fish or, or, or something, are you like, how? That's got to be kind of hectic to try to keep catching it for the 10 minutes it's, before you have to head in? It's extremely hectic, but at the same time, you really can't speed up because if if you've been fishing slow all day and you're just, you're that one fish away, speeding up's not going to help you. So you have to, you have to try to just keep, keep your head in the game as much as possible. It's eight eight hours of focus so it's not just going out and sitting on a sitting on a riverbank throwing a worm and a bobber out there it's right. it's competitive fishing and it it's uh it's rather demanding believe it or not <laughs> i recommend anybody try it just once if, if you like competition and you really can't compete because you're uh you know you maybe your body's beat up or you're too old try it see what you see what you think <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Get yourself a bass boat, Ed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like my next thing. Uh, okay, here's one for you. Are you superstitious at all? I am extremely superstitious. Cliff, uh, Cliff will laugh at me at some of the things that I'll do. Um, 
one of my big ones is do not ever ever catch a fish on the first cast. If, <laughs> really? If it's if it's if it's five after six, we show up to our first spot and I catch one on the first cast. We may as well leave because I'm I'm completely unraveled. <laughs> um, an, another one would be I don't take the net out of the, my locker until we catch that first fish, which can cause for some hectic moments if it's a big one. But uh, yeah, I try not to pull that out, or uh, <laughs> uh, I don't fill my live wells at all. I, I, for example, last weekend on the Potomac River, you actually have to drive through what's called a boat check. So the tournament director will hook in your boat, make sure you have to have your live wells on to make sure that they work. Right. So as I go through this live uh, boat check, my live wells are running. As soon as he says you're good, I shut them off and I start pumping the water out immediately because I don't want any water in them at all because I just – I have a bad phobia about having my live wells full before I actually catch a fish. <laughs> what? I, I'm quirky. I'm quirky. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> uh, uh, nothing else that needs to be shared. <laughs> I'll just say, let me guess, you have some lucky <laughs> underwear that have a bunch of holes in them or something. And... Uh, yes, there are, but we're not okay. going to get into that. Okay, all right. I shouldn't even ask. Um, they may or may not have to be due on them. <laughs> Great. That's good to know. You can probably use those for bait, stink bait. <laughs> Catfish. Uh, there you go. Uh, can you uh, mention that the dates, actually, uh, you said there's two out this way? One Lake Champlain. Yes. One is uh, Cash and Rods Tour uh, will, will be on Lake Champlain out of Ticonderoga on August 11th. And uh, the Cash and Rods tour will be out of Messina for the St. Lawrence on September 8th. Oh, very good. So at 2 p.m., come on down to Ticonderoga and watch the weigh-in, hang out afterwards, and same with the Cash and Rods tour in Messina. Uh, for the FLW, uh, Cliff will action in Plattsburgh on June 16th. I can't make that one due to a work obligation, but uh, Cliff will be up there on uh, June 16th for the FLW. Oh, okay. Well, I'll have to look for that then. Well, that's basically all the questions I have. I don't know if you have anything else you'd like to add. No, just thanks for having me on, man. And oh, uh, Thank you for coming, man. This went, this went well. Yeah. I well, definitely uh, learned a lot. I'm sure some other people have learned something, so that'd be great. Anybody has any questions, just you can uh, forward them on to me and I'll try to help them out. I, lo I like, love talking bass fishing. I love helping people out. Uh, can you name the your guys' jigs and lures? What was the name of that again? And where they can get it? Get uh, reallifebaits.com, or you can look uh, Cliff up on uh, Real Life Baits on Facebook as well. There we go. That's a good ending right there. Okay, people. Well, that's uh, Scott Real. Again, thank you for joining us. Um, again, if you had any questions about fishing or lures or jigs, whatever, again, uh, you can get them from him. But uh, this is Fast Eddie from uh, Rise Above Talk Show. Um, tomorrow night we will have Josh the Camera Guy on from Bonatni Spine Institute where I got my back surgery and we're going to talk about that tomorrow night. Uh, I think it'll be between 5 and 6 tomorrow night. I'll keep you posted about that one. And then next Wednesday we have Derek Reset on from Mattress by Appointment and we'll keep you uh, informed on that one as well. So again, Scott, thank you for joining us. Until next Thanks for time. having me, Ed. No problem. So that's it, people, for Fast Eddie. Peace out. XO, XO.